G'day, my name's Luke Marchant, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Sydney, Australia. A few weeks ago I finished my first summer working here at Camp Hazen and I really enjoyed it. Um, so I've stayed on for a few more weeks of post-season work. Now, Kath Davies, our camp director, has asked me to make a, a kind of a tour video showing you around camp if you're going to be a new staff member and you want to see what it's like living here and, and uh, kind of working here. And so I'm going to do a tour around the camp, try and show you as much as I can. If you want to see um, another video I made, which is a bit more in-depth into the program, that's the actual like, um, work, so that's CA, Creative Arts, um, OP, stuff like that. If you want to see that, I made another video, so if you want to click right here, right now, it's only going to be here for a few seconds, this uh, annotation will take you to that video. So if you click it, just click it, and then three, two, one, it's gone. So you want to see the tour? Right, we'll start here. I'm at the car park that's just behind me. This is where um, uh, you'll arrive first. And then uh, we're going to head over in that direction um, towards the boys' village. Alright, so here at camp, the boys' village is divided into two. You have the younger boys, which are in grades 4, 5 and maybe 6. And then we have the older boys, which are from like 6 through to about 9. Um, the youngest boys are in a village called Junianta. And then the older boys are in a village called Sachem. I'm up in Sachem at the moment, and you can see the cabins behind me. Sachem usually starts at about cabin 20, depending on the session, sometimes it gets lower, sometimes it comes high. But yeah, usually around cabin 20 is where Sachem starts, and it goes right up to 26, which is right up the back there, if you can see. Juniata goes from cabin 1, and it goes like 1, 2, 3, and then 17, 18, 19, sometimes 20. Um, yeah, so right behind me, we have the shower house. Um, this is where if you're going to take showers up in Sachem or in Upper Juniata, you will come here and you'll sort it out with the other councillors as to what times you'll be taking them because each of these cabins doesn't have a shower. Um, and then over here to my left, we've got uh, Sachem Longhouse. Now, Sachem Longhouse is uh, kind of a communal space where there's uh, it's an empty space inside. We do like a lot of, that's where we meet, that's kind of where we do some games, um, a lot of other activities um, as a group, and that's also, that's also where quest goes if it's raining and then behind uh, the longhouse we've got Sagem Hollow I don't know if you can see it you might be able to see the uh, the benches up the back but that's the um, the amphitheater where um, the plays are performed and uh, where we do some other stuff um, and then just tucked on to the end of Sagem of Sachem longhouse we have uh, Sachem staff residence that's where usually the boys village directors live and uh, so that's where you'll be able to find them and so I think I'll just head into cabin um, 22. That was my cabin during staff training. And uh, we'll go in and see what it look, looks like inside uh, the Sagem cabins. All right, so I'm in cabin 22 at the moment. Like I said, this is where I slept for my uh, week of staff training. Now uh, the cabins, as you can see, they're pretty um, basic. We've got four bunks. There's one, two, three, and four. So you usually have up to eight um, boys sleeping with you in this uh, cabin, so two per bunk. Um, then you've got a counsellor room, which is where one of the counsellors will sleep. It's uh, pretty cool. We've got one bed, and then you've got like a cabinet and stuff. And then the other counsellor will sleep around the front here next to the front door in this bunk, either the top or the bottom. And you've got a desk there to write your counsellor notes and uh, shelves to put your clothes and stuff. So you'll usually have um, two counsellors per cabin. Sometimes you'll have three. Uh, depending on the situation, but yeah, usually it's two counselors and between five, six, seven, or eight boys up here. So um, now we'll head down to Junianta and show you what it's like down there. So I've just come down from Sachem up there. These are the Sachem steps. So that's where you'll come down if you're living up in Sachem every day. And I'm down in that lower Junianta. So this isn't the full Junianta village, but this is where most of the Junianta boys live. We've got cabin, let me see if I can show you guys. We've got cabin one through there. Then we've got cabin three, and then cabin two is over here. Cabin two is the cabin that I was in um, all summer. Um, usually you move around a bit, but I was lucky enough to stay in one place with uh, those boys. So like I said, down here it's usually grades four and five, down this end. And then the uh, Rissa Juniata is slightly up the hill. But yeah, it's just in front of the soccer pitch here. Uh, I was in Creative Arts, which is just there in uh, Stanley, so it was a short commute for me. But we'll, uh, we'll head into cabin two and I'll just show you what's different about um, the lower junior to cabins compared to the Sachem ones. Alright, so welcome to cabin 2. This has been my home for 9 weeks this summer. Um, I've enjoyed it a lot. As you can see, the difference between 
Um, this one and the ones up in Sachem and Upper Juniata aren't that different, but the, the key difference between cabins 1, 2 and 3 and the rest of the cabins up in uh, the boys' village is that we have a bathroom in here. So instead of having a council room, we've got a bathroom, which contains a basin and a toilet. Um, so that means that the councillors um, both sleep in this bunk bed over by the front door and with a desk and the shelving. So it's pretty much the same setup as the uh, same layout as the uh, other cabins, just with a bathroom instead of a council room. Um, and so obviously you saw that we didn't have a shower in there. We still have to go outside the shower and that is out the back here. It's going to get a little bit bright for a second. Um, out the back here we have the junior to shower house. So it's got four showers in it and then we've got cabin one right here and cabin three. So at night we usually just rotate through the cabins, usually start from youngest and go up or whatever system we're feeling like that night. So yeah, that's uh, Lower Juniata. So now we're going to head over towards Stanley Lodge and uh, have a talk about that. So right on the edge of the uh, soccer field here, we have Stanley Lodge. Now Stanley Lodge is a pretty cool building here on camp. We have Creative Arts located down the bottom. Um, it's right next to cabins four and five, which are part of Mosaqua and the Quest Rock, which is over there. And we also have OP, located on the other side of, um, around the corner there, on the other side of uh, Stanley Lodge. It's uh, upstairs, it's a big open area, that's where we have a lot of group games, um, if it's raining that's where OP goes to do their indoor activities, and uh, it's just a cool place to hang out. So yeah, that's uh, Stanley, like I said, right in front of the soccer field and the baseball diamond here, and it's uh, a pretty cool building. Okay, so I'm sitting in front of the famous Gaga pit, which if you don't know what that is, you'll find out when you come to camp. I won't tell you about that now. Um, but this pretty much marks the start, or the, at least the central point in the girls' village. Now the girls' village, like the boys' village, is divided into two villages. We've got the youngest girls, which is Mosakwa, and the older girls, which is Tamarack. Now, Mosakwa consists of cabins four, five, which are on the other side of Stanley, six, seven, um, eight, nine, and I think like 10 or 11 maybe, I wasn't in the girls village obviously so I'm not quite sure where it cuts off but in those cabins they're pretty much the same as the Juniata ones in the sense that they've got um, uh, instead of having a counselor room they have a bathroom but as well as a toilet and sink they have a shower which is pretty fancy except for 4 and 5, 4 and 5 don't have showers but 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 all have showers um, 12 through to 16 which is the Tamarack that's further up that way um, those are the older girls, they don't have showers. So they're pretty much exactly the same as the Juniata cabins that I showed you before. They just have um, a toilet in their cabin. Now, for those girls, they shower at the end of this building here. This building is called Mosakwa Longhouse. And it's very similar to Station Longhouse. It's got a, uh, an open space inside that you do lots of um, activities and stuff in. But at the very end, we have Mosakwa Shower House, which you access from around the back. And that's where the girls take their showers. Um, in the evenings. Uh, like I said, I wasn't in the girls' village, so um, I can't tell you a lot about what happens in them, so like secret girls' business or whatever, but um, it's a lot of fun here, and uh, yeah, that's the girls' village for you. Just come from the girls' village where I just was, and uh, over my shoulder you can see Stanley, and here we've got the basketball court and the soccer field behind me. Um, right over behind the basketball court, we've got the volleyball court, and just in front of me, you can see our firing. Now, this is a very important place in Camp Hazen. This is where, at the start of every two week session and at the end of every session, we have a campfire. And the kids sit in these benches, and you can see the fire pit over there by the waterfront. Is uh, We get a nice fire going in there. We have like skits and songs and various things going on. It's really fun. Um, and then, obviously, we have our lake, beautiful Cedar Lake, and the waterfront where we do lots of our waterfront activities. That's where that happens. And also, over behind me, you can see kind of through the trees our big dining hall. So I'll head over there now and I'll show you what it's like. So this is Bunting Dining Hall. This is obviously where we eat all our meals here at camp. It's a really cool place. This is where you get to see everyone and catch up during the day. Um, I'm going to head inside. Hopefully there's no one in there because I won't get embarrassed talking to myself to a camera. But I'll head inside and show you what it's like in there. Um, as you can see, you can see pretty much most of the camp on this side of the street from the dining hall. It's got a great location. So let's head inside. Yes, nobody in here. So yep, this is the dining hall. Usually there's tables in the summer right up through here. And uh, 
it's pretty cool. This is where the kitchen just over to our left. So if you're in the kitchen, this is where you'll be working. I'll just come over and quickly poke my head through the door if it's open. That's the lakeside room where Onondaga, the oldest co-ed village, they, that's where they sit through through those doors in there. And I'll just stick my head in here. This is the kitchen. Somebody's listening to music. Yep, yeah, so that's the dining hall. This is where you'll be eating and uh, socializing. So I've just come from the dining hall, which is over there. And if you just look behind me now, you can see our magnificent climbing wall. 32 feet of pure awesome. And so this is an element in OP that we use to uh, climb. And then behind me, you can see what is called Knoll's Lodge. That is where the health lodge is located during the summer. So if you have any bumps or bruises, this is where you come. And then just in front of me here, we have the land sport shed where land sport is based out of. This is right next to the crosswalk. And because we have a street that pretty much bisects camp, we've got about two thirds on this side and the rest is over the other side of the camp. We have stuff like the Yapan Tower and skate park and archery. So we'll head across there now and I'll uh, show you what it's like over there. All right, so I'm across the street now and I'm in the Alpine field and in the Alpine field we have our uh, Alpine cabins which is where the Leahs live and our Leah is kind of a mix between a camper and a counsellor in the sense that they are still considered campers so they have to live with counsellors in these in these, in these uh, cabins here but they do a lot of leadership training to like maybe in the future become a counsellor so they're, they're, cool, they're cool kids and this is where they live also behind me you can see the Alpine Tower it's another climbing structure we have here at camp. I'll come closer and show you in a second. Um, and then behind me directly is the day camp pavilion where day campers get dropped off. And I don't know if you can see, but through the trees here, um, that red building is the office. That's where if you have any administration needs, you can go and uh, get yourself sorted. But yeah, let's head over to the Alpine Tower and check that out. Okay, so here is our Alpine Tower. It's uh, 55 feet of vertical fun. So this is where um, OP comes to do their climbing and stuff. It's a really cool climbing structure. There's like over 100 ways to get to the top. There's swinging ladders, swinging logs, swinging everything. But it's uh, lots of fun. Right next to it we have the giant swing, which you can't really see, but that's what um, Quest uses to clip in and, and do some swings and stuff, which is lots of fun too. And then uh, through this path, we have um, the skate park and archery range, which I'm going to go to now. So here is the skate park. You can just see the uh, Alpine Tower just through the trees there. So it's pretty close to the tower and this is where obviously you'll do skating if you're a land sports counsellor or if you just like skating. It's pretty sick, got a few ramps, a few uh, boxes and stuff and some rails. Uh, the kids love it and uh, it looks like pretty fun. Okay, so you can kind of see the skate park over my shoulder where I've come from. And so if I do a, a little bit of a turn, you can see the archery range right behind me. This is where you'll bring your kids if you're a land sports counsellor to do some archery. It's a really fun place. I haven't had the chance to do it yet, which is a bit disappointing, but uh, hopefully I'll get the chance someday. And our final stop on this tour is the Patakonk Village. This is where um, lots of the kitchen staff and the day camp staff live during the summer, um, and also now in post where us staff live because there's less of us. So we'll head inside, let's say, let's head inside PC4 and we'll check out what the cabins look like inside. Okay, so we have eight cabins in the Patakonk Village. I'm in the fourth one, so we call it PC4. I picked it because it's a, a girl's cabin and I thought it would be clean. I kind of assumed incorrectly, but we'll uh, have a look anyway. Um, so in all your ca PC cabins, you've got your kitchen, your fridge, your um, sink and stuff, and then you've also got a bathroom which has um, a toilet and a shower, and then you've got your three bedrooms, which so there's usually about six people who can live in each PC. So it's a pretty comfortable living. All right, so that's pretty much camp. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour. It's a great place here at camp. I really love it. And if you're a new staff member coming this summer, I really hope to meet you. If I don't, have a great summer and uh, it's been good chatting.